Dr. Sam Osmanagic, PhD in Mayan Studies, Megalithic and Pyramid Site Researchers. Now, I'm uh, in northern Vietnam. This is the Soxon district. Nearby is the Lake Dong Do. And uh, I'm in front of very interesting phenomena. Dolmen. Now, dolmens in science are known as the megalithic monument where you have two, three or more vertical blocks that hold a big horizontal block. It's very often called as the tabletop. According to the conventional science, dolmens are tombs. And you can read that anywhere, in encyclopedias, in history books, in uh, non-scientific sources like Wikipedia. However, there is not a single proof to justify this claim. Dolmens are not tombs. The fact is, is that uh, besides some of them, there are some graves, mostly done by the owners of the land but they have nothing to do with the creation of dolmens or their purpose. Another potential purpose, uh, according to the conventional archaeologists and historians, is that dolmens were used for the ceremonial purposes, for religious purposes, for cults, even to uh, places like to pray to gods and so on using the term stone gods. Again, when archaeologists don't have explanation, then they say ceremonial places for religious purposes without any scientific proof. So we have to admit that uh, the state of conventional science today, archaeology, geology, history, anthropology, they have no idea what dolmens were built for. Now let's see where they are located on the planet. Most of them are surprisingly on Korean Peninsula, especially on the west coast of today's South Korea. There are 35,000 registered dolmens of different sizes. Some of them multi-ton blocks on top of the smaller support blocks. They are built uh, actually in China. You can find them in countries like India on several different places. You can find them on Middle East. You can find them in Israel, for example, Golma, Dolmens, big ones, but most of them were destroyed during ancient Roman occupations. They are in Jordan, they are in Lebanon, they are in Egypt. Many dolmens in Mediterranean basin, for example, Tunisia, Algeria. There are dolmens in Europe, thousands and thousands of them. Most of them in France. Famous dolmens are in Karnak, a lot of them. But also in Ireland, there are dolmens in Wales. There are dolmens in England. There are dolmens also in Germany, in Poland. They are located in Northern Europe as well. Scandinavia, for example, Sweden, Norway. There are dolmens in the United States of America. So even today, the dolmens have been built. Some of them, for example, in Indonesia. So this tradition remained. Personally, I even built two dolmens. One is on my ranch in Croatia, on the beautiful island of Brač, and another one in the central Bosnian town of Visoko, near the Bosnian pyramids. So, the question is, how come we have this tradition of dolmens? What was their purpose? When they were built? By who? Right now, I'm in Vietnam. This dolmen is not even registered in any encyclopedia. 
So this we can treat as a really discovery. Now, let's see this dolmen, what it consists of. It consists of one, two, and in the back was the third supported stone. They were upright, they were vertical. One, two, and three. And what is their size? For example, the first one where this tabletop is resting, this one has the following dimensions. It is 135 centimeters in height, it is uh, 30 centimeters wide and 50 centimeters thick. When we multiply those dimensions, we are getting 0 0.2 cubic meters. And when we multiply with a specific weight, we are getting the mass of this dolmen, which is 445 kilos. One man cannot move 445 kilos. The similar sizes and the similar weight is in another two supporting stones. But what really is remarkable is the big horizontal block. Its dimensions are 5 meters 40 centimeters in length, the longest, and the width is 2 meters and 20 centimeters and thickness about 60 centimeters. We multiply those three dimensions, the result is 7.128 cubic meters when we multiply with the specific weight of this material 2.2 it is 15.68 tons so it is almost 16 tons now we have more than one ton then we can talk about the megaliths and megalithic structure what is megaliths megalithos greek two words mega big liters stone big stone this is really huge stone somebody had social organization to move to transport these blocks and to place them on those three much smaller blocks having engineering skills they knew how to balance and uh, if you are to move 15 or 16 tons, you have to have technology. You can have all of the enthusiasm in the world, but you won't be able to move it. Goodwill is simply not enough. So either you have crane, like we do today, or forklift, like we do today. This is our technology. Or you use some other means. Manually, it will be a very, very difficult task to do that. So, what kind of technology or equipment or some spiritual knowledge the ancient builders have? Hard to say. Did they know how to use the ultrasound? So, did the ancients know how to use the power of the frequencies and the ultrasound to move such a huge blocks? It is very possible. There are different ways to achieve the transportation. Now, I have done some measurements at this location, here, and control place about 200 meters from here. These are the values that I've been measured. First, I measured the concentration of the negative ions. As you know, they are very beneficial to our bodies. Negative ion concentration, 200 meters from here, was between 600 and 1200 negative ions per cubic centimeter. However, the positive ion concentration, which makes us tired and sleepy, is at the same level, 600 to 1200. When you have the same level, you don't have free negative ions, meaning they cannot do their function. And their function is to clean the body from the viruses and bacteria. And then I did the measurement here, and the values are showing that the negative ions are in the range from 600 to 2000, and positive from 100 to 1200. Meaning there are more negative ions, which makes those 
negative ions, this negative charge in the air, available to clean our body from viruses, bacteria, to raise the level of oxygen in our body, and to clear the atmosphere. So even though the dolmen is not in the full function, like during the original times, we can say that thanks to this setup, the stones and megaliths, we still have a good, healthy environment. Of course, if you are able to do some cleanup, it could become a nice touristic attraction. The second element that I measured was so-called life energy. Now, we are talking about the instruments which was uh, developed based on uh, William Reich's work from 70 years back. When he realized that we are surrounded by unknown form of the energy, he named it life energy, which we can call it organ energy, we can call it chi energy, we can call it prana in Eastern tradition. But the higher the level of this organ energy, better for us, of course. So, on the scale from 0 to 100, I did the measurements, the control location, and the measurements show the level of 9%. The level here is 20%, meaning it is more than double in life energy. And finally, I did measurements of magnetic fields. Magnetic field, if it is in the range from 20 to 70 nanotesla, these are good values, and both places are showing good values. The one over there, 47 nanotesla, and here is 43 nanotesla, which means it's a normal, very pleasant magnetic field. So now, we can see that those dolmens were built all over the planet, and then they show some very good energy values. So now we are getting a step closer in explaining what was the purpose of dolmens. The way they teach archaeology students in the classrooms about dolmens, about the megaliths, about the menhirs, about the pyramids, about the tumuli phenomena, it's all wrong. Archaeologists today, or historians, or anthropologists, will never figure out what was the true purpose of these structures. That's why they label them tombs, places to worship the stone gods, and so on. They don't have spiritual knowledge, because they don't teach meditation in the classrooms. They don't have energy knowledge. They don't do measurements. They don't have engineering mind. And finally, they don't have medical knowledge. They don't know what is good for the body, physical body, energy body, for our mind and for our spiritual body. When I started building dolmens, I realized that the moment you have those vertical blocks, the energy starts flowing from underground through those blocks. You have barrier. Energy continues this way, coming down, making this energy flow. When you are inside, you feel perfectly protected and safe. And these are the ideal condition to relax, to close the eyes, and start with the meditation process. In a deep meditation process, you will be able to get the clarity, clarity of your mind. And then, you can start making proper decisions in your life. Decisions regarding your business life, your family life, your health life, your love life, your spirituality. Making decisions extremely important in our life. Moving from the stress environment. Next, healing aspect. You clean your body. Negative ions work on so many levels. They are so good for us. Somehow they knew that when they combine certain locations with the stones and geometrical shape, 
they create a good environment for our health. So everything that's important in our life then was present here. Healing, spirituality, clarity of the mind. Those stuff are not so important today because instead of healing, we have pharmaceutical industry, which basically poison us. Instead of spirituality, you know, we think only about the material stuff, go after the money and technological gadgets. The ancients were smart. So when we think about dolmens all over the planet, let's think about the real values in our life. So, Dr. Sam Osmanagic from northern Vietnam, about two hours drive from the capital city of Hanoi, in the front of the unrecorded so far dolmen. 16 tons rest on three small blocks. This country, Vietnam, is the land of wonders. And uh, before I leave Vietnam, this is April of 2019. It's very hot. Usually about 35 degrees, 37 degrees. The reason I have the long sleeves is to protect my skin from the sunburn. This is very intriguing location. We have water, we have pyramid-shaped hills here, we have megaliths. Of course, important question to determine who built it is to find out when it was built. The oldest document talking about Vietnamese history is only 2,300 years old. That was a time when the province or community named Nam Viet was mentioned. Nam Viet, Vietnam. However, according to some Chinese sources, Vietnamese history goes back to almost 5,000 years before present, when the farmers from the north, from the Yellow River, came to this area of the northern Vietnam. And they continued farming. They were farming what? The rice. So for 5,000 years, we have farmers here. So we don't really have organized communities with such a social organization that was capable of moving 10, 15, 20 tons. And in uh, central Vietnam, granite blocks of hundreds of tons, even thousands of tons. We are talking about the megalithic culture. Nobody knew that Vietnam had megalithic culture. We knew about England, Germany, Bosnia and Croatia, or even India, but not Vietnam. So now we do know that there was a megalithic culture. When? The last such phase was the time window from five to eight thousand years before present. This is probably the era when Stonehenge in England or Karnak in France or Anun Shag and Alastainar in Sweden were built. Big megaliths forming circles. Also dolmens and menhirs. So I would say that this is much older than written, recorded or even oral Vietnamese history. That's why this discovery is so profound. Thank you.